there's another mental health thing on Netflix that has a really nice soundtrack. But I was looking at what what would this sound like? What does meditation sound like? What does yeah, what does getting over a hard day sound like? And just really trying to visualize what the music would be. Welcome to season two of Students of Mind, the podcast where we aim to normalize conversations about mental health. Last season, we connected you with experts in the field of mental health to provide an understanding of topics and illnesses that may not have been easily accessible. This season, we will continue our learning journey together by not only speaking to experts, but also by listening to the voices and stories of real people who are living, surviving, and even thriving while also facing challenges with their mental health in their everyday life. This season, we want to hear your stories to get the full truth of what it's like to manage one's mental health and navigate living with mental illness. My name is Jade, and today on the last episode of this season of Students of Mind, I'm joined by John Tyler, a full-time artist and creator of Love Groove Entertainment. John creates all the music for this podcast, and today you'll get to know about him, his creative processes, and the ways gaining knowledge of mental health has fueled his latest project. I hope by listening to the show, you're able to learn something new and gain some encouragement through hearing our experts and listening to the journeys of our guests. However, this show is not a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your mental health professional or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have about your condition. Never disregard professional advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on the Students of Mind podcast. Today's guest is John Tyler. You may not know this, but you all have already indirectly met John if you've listened to previous episodes of the show, as he created all of the music that you hear. John is a 21-year-old artist, multi-instrumentalist, multi-genre producer, founder of Love Groove Entertainment and Music Festivals, and has worked with several large companies like Afro Newspaper and Under Armour. Today, John talks about his creative process, the creation of the Students of Mind music, a bit about his upbringing and the life-changing mental health experience that fueled his new project. I'm excited to have you on here because your work is in every single episode of the show. And it's just been long overdue to introduce you to the audience. So I am excited. And the first thing that I want to ask you is just to introduce yourself to the audience and tell them about the work that you Yes. So first and foremost, I am a artist and musician and songwriter. And I love writing theme songs and jingles for people. So all the music you hear in the Studio of Mind podcast is done by me. And I've done a bunch of other cool things with a bunch of other different companies. Um, But I also released my own solo music and I own the company Love Group Entertainment and Love Group Festival. And we do a lot of work in Baltimore City and working with artists and making sure artists get paid to show their work and all genres of art. So that's visual art, um, music, film, um, pr- pretty much trying to get into every art field as possible. And yeah, that's like the broken down version, the main things that I do, because there's a lot of other little things, but yeah. That's great. How old are you? 21. I'm ready to be 22, though. So uh, yeah, I just needed <laughs> you to say that because I think people could hear everything you just said and think you're like 35, 40 years old. Because the things that you're doing are 
incredible for someone of your age. I think for both of us, I think the, the stuff that we're doing and the work that we're doing right now is not normal for all 22 year olds. And I think that I hope that you're able to recognize the greatness in everything that you're doing because it truly is great. No, it's crazy. I, I just now realize it because um, at first I just kind of saw myself as like a regular dude, <laughs> you know, who just likes to create and make stuff. But it was a few situations at the last love group. There's been five love group festivals and I had these a couple bands. Some of them were like 16 year olds up to like 18 um, and of course up to 35. But these uh, 16 year old parents, they were like crying to me and like expressing the joy in how seeing their child on like a major stage and to be paid for it, how that like changed their perspective and put hope into the like, yo, my child really can be like a full on full time artist. And after that conversation, this was at Love Group. I like literally looked at everything like, holy crap, I actually am the one who did this. Never thought about it like that. Never just always saw myself as regular, kind of never gave myself any praise. And part of that was because I was kind of scared because I know a lot of people from the city, it's easy for them to get caught up and to really put others down and, you know, to be very over overly cocky or overly braggadocious. So yeah, yeah. So it, it's crazy that you said that because just now I'm now kind of seeing like, wow, I actually matter. And I think part of that goes into uh, my come up because I was literally <laughs> the most hated person. Not the most hated, but I was literally no one ever rock would be like that. I was pretty lonesome. I, I had like two friends, like real friends. It was my childhood. It was completely different to how my current life is. And I kind of am stuck in the past of like, no one really likes this or like me like that. So I don't think I'm important. Um, so I know that was a long answer. No, that's that's really interesting. I think that that's super common for artists to just feel like everything they're doing is wrong or like this path that they're choosing isn't the right one. Like you, I thought everyone just didn't like me. And so that's, I walk in the air of thinking people automatically don't like me. But for me, it's helpful when like an outside force is like, Jade, look at what you're doing look at everything, stop and breathe for a second and realize what you're doing and realize the feedback you're getting. Like that feedback you received is amazing. And just trying to linger on those more positive feedbacks and going back to them in moments when you're really down on yourself. That's what's been helpful for me with all of this. No, 100%. I definitely am trying to move a more positive mindset because we definitely, I know as humans, we naturally kind of let the bad take up the good and the past really take up the present. So yeah, that, that's a great point and definitely how I'm trying to move forward. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit more about your music before we kind of talk about mental health and music? Can you just talk about your process and if it's easier, maybe just your process specifically for creating the music for students of mind? Yeah, so, and it's funny because students of mine, <laughs> this whole podcast inspired my current project um, that drops Friday. Or by the time that you guys are hearing this, it will already be out. Um, but when, before I met you, I was not familiar, familiarized with mental health. I didn't even really know mental, like your mental really was a thing. I had no idea that it affects you just as much or even more than your physical health. I had no idea, never, never was brought up in my, well, at the time, 19 years of life, I think that was, or 20 years of life, or whatever the case may be. Um, so when you propose student of minds of everything you're trying to do, I had to do research. And I was like reading about stuff. I know you sent me some articles and I sat with it, uh, I think for like a week. Cause I, you know, I do work pretty quickly and I, I was just looking at other things, uh, like, uh, this, is a, this is another mental health thing on Netflix that has a really nice soundtrack, but I was looking at what, what would this sound like? What does meditation sound like? What does, yeah. What does, you know, 
getting over a hard day sound like and just really trying to visualize what the music would be and kind of just playing around with new ideas very dreamy very like reverby um and just trying to create the emotions that we feel like anxiety uh pain happiness uh just all the little things and that's really how we inspired it and I really, I did a lot of research before making the music because I, I really wanted to to really get those feelings out. So yeah, that was kind of the process. And uh, and just, you know, looking up words, my writing process in general, I have like a giant long list of words and I kind of just like pick a word and like, okay, I'm gonna write a song about this today. And I had the same thing for you. So a lot of different emotions, a lot of different stuff about health and, you know, your mind. And I wrote the music based off like that. That's, I have, yeah, that's an amazing process. And I think I can hear that in the music. Um, you said one of the words you used was dreamy. And that's the vibe I get from a few of the songs you sent for the podcast. And they're songs that I would always, because when I edit, I um, there's a halfway point. And in that halfway point, I always stick the music there and I stop editing and I listen to the music because for even for me, it's like a good way to break up the stagnation of editing and the heaviness of the content. You know, I wanted the music to be a landing place for people to go, you know, in the middle of the episode just to breathe and kind of take a break from all of the information they're hearing because it's a lot and you captured that perfectly yeah and i think you know hearing that you were trying to portray different emotions and feelings within each song i can i can see that completely um and you definitely achieved that goal <laughs> thank you so much i'm excited for you to hear the, the new songs because i made it when i went through that really big we're going to talk about this too, if you would like to talk about it. But when I went through that panic, that major panic attack I had earlier this year, I made it that same day. Um, and it, it's fully about, like the whole thing is completely about, like that, that spring has changed my whole life. Like seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can get, in that, get into that later if you want. Yeah, so my next question was just, before we get into that, just now that you, you know, have this awareness of mental health, how do music and mental health connect for you? Yeah, so now as a musician, well, as a full-time artist, I've been a full-time artist since the pandemic. And music before the pandemic was very fun. It was very soothing, but at the same time, I do it for a living. So it's also like a business. And that really kind of what messed things up for me. And I had I was very lost for it like a very long time because the one thing I had that was my, my escapism from reality or just like that takes off the pressure and anxiety that I was dealing with was music. But now my music is becoming what brings me a lot of pressure and anxiety. And now I'm kind of stuck. Like what, what do I do now? Like I have nothing else to do. Um, so it took a it took a long time. It took for that situation to happen for me to go back into like making music for the fun of it and not for the business of it. Because I mean, business is great if it's what pays the bills, but it was bringing me completely down. It was really putting me in a dark place that I didn't want to be in, and I'm sure nobody wants to be in. Um, so yeah, that that was a long process of letting go of a lot of businesses and learning how to say no to things, um, which is a big, it sounds so simple, but saying no is like one of the hardest things I feel like, uh, especially when there's money involved, like lots of money. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially as an artist, because I feel like when someone offers to give you money for your art, it's so easy to just say yes, because at least for me, when someone shows value in my art, I'm just honored immediately. <laughs> Um, let's go into that panic attack. I know that panic attacks are very common, but people don't realize that they're having a panic attack. And we don't talk about the experience of a panic attack often, especially from the perspective of someone who's had it 
who had it for the first time. So uh, can you just talk about like what that experience was like? Yeah. So <laughs> this is probably one of the worst experiences I think I ever had. And this is coming from someone who used to do kind of skateboarding professionally. Like I done broke my knee. I busted my head open twice. <laughs> fingers like literally everything uh <laughs> so that yeah so this was in i think it was march maybe april i don't remember exactly the timeline but to give you context i was probably the most busiest that i've ever been in my life i was still dealing with school stuff we just did the women's love group which which was like one of the hardest love groups i think we ever done it was it was that was something else. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it was basically the BET Awards. Like we we overdid ourselves. Like it was great, but on the other side of things, it was it was the most exhausting thing ever. But like literally we did that love groove and then had to start planning the next one, which was in four months. And that was a lot. So dealing with both of those in school and also dealing with uh, my personal project, all the other projects I got my thing went Under Armour at the same time, same with Loyola University. I was writing theme songs and music for them. And it, it was like big production stuff. It wasn't like, it wasn't uh, like I did with you. This was like big band type stuff, which took a lot of time. And it was just a lot of, it was so much at the same time, there was no time to sleep. And I wasn't sleeping that much. And this one particular night, I was laying in bed I closed my eyes. I was asleep maybe for like an hour. This is like around 1 a.m. And I just like woke up in a panic, uh, like breathing really hard. Like it felt like I was about to die. I couldn't like breathe. I felt like my spirit left my body. And I started throwing up like maybe three or four times. It was it was a mess. And I was stuck the whole night. And it was it was so bad. I honestly thought that was it for me. And I hit you like that morning because you were the only person that I, I knew that probably knew what that was. And you conversated like, yeah, I think that was a panic attack and how that can come from overworking and overstressing yourself. I was very confused. I was like, that can happen. Like it, it was it was it was an awakening. Yeah. Real awakening. Yeah. I don't think people realize how scary they feel and how much it actually feels like you're not gonna make it um and just the toll that that takes on your body like i don't know how you felt afterwards but because your body is literally going into a state of like trying to save your life when you are going through a panic attack and you know you have to recover from that and especially as someone going through it for the first time i know i was worried about your recovery time and if you were gonna have enough time between you know the panic attack and everything else that you needed to do to de-escalate and calm down a little bit but yeah i was so happy that you reached out to me because i think that one i'm glad that we had met <laughs> before this happened because i don't know if there would have been someone who would have known exactly what it was that you were dealing with um and i'm glad that you had the initiative to reach out because I feel like that's really hard because things like panic attacks are super vulnerable. So to me, that was really impressive that you kind of reached out immediately. Well, first, thank you for being there because like that, that shows true friendship. Like really, especially that was, I think, my lowest point of this year and just to have a friend and who actually understands it and you know, they're just to comfort me. That meant more than the world to me. And it went a long way, whether you know that or not, it did. I'm really glad to hear that. And that's what I'm just trying to do. Um, my next question is just, well, I guess you already talked about this kind of how the panic attack shifted things for you. Um, but did it shift the way that you approach your mental health or has it caused you to just tend to or think about your mental health more yeah it uh, it happened i think we talked at like 8 a.m or i don't know sometime in the morning then i made this this current project that's out now 
when y'all hear this. And I made it just for me. I wasn't really thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about I was going to make a project or anything. It just kind of happened naturally. I just wanted to do something to relax. And I actually freed my schedule for like the, a full two weeks after that happened because I didn't want to deal with anything else but just chilling and relaxing. But it really made me have time to not do anything and to tell myself it's okay to, to relax and not work. Because there was a certain point in my time, in my life, because it's the way social media is pushed on us, us young people. They make it seem like, dang, we got to have like a full-on luxury apartment by 20. We got to have a nice car by 21. By 23, we got to be a millionaire. Like that's, a, that's like literally at that time, every time I got on Twitter, you know, I see the keys to the apartment, got the apartment at 18, got the keys to the car, 20. I'm like, and it, it, it lasted for months. I'm like, dang, I'm not working hard enough. So it made me like push myself way past my limit to get, you know, to get these luxury things. But in all actuality, I really didn't need it. But just the way the social media like kind of just made me feel like I needed it, it, it really messed me up. And it made me realize, you know what, after the pain attack, it made me realize I'm on my own journey. I need time for myself and to break and to not really do anything involving business or anything that just makes my mind run. I just need to chill, relax, put my feet up, drink a smoothie, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy myself. And I have been doing that since. I discovered biking. I bike every day now. Like that's my escapism now. And I feel the most free. Yeah. That's so great. I was about to, I was just about to ask you like what are the mental health practices you engage in regularly? But you said biking, taking a break from work, like those two things by themselves can be so good for just resetting the mind and giving it a break from all the things. Yeah, it feels so good to bike when the wind's hit my face. I'm just like, dang, I'd be very liberated. But yeah, I, I breathe. So every morning when I wake up, I, have, I, I just breathe and I feel my breath. Like, you know, I could feel it throughout my whole body. And then I stretch. I guess I was told it's yoga, but I do this 20 minute stretch every day. Um, and that has helped tremendously. Not only do I feel taller, but my body doesn't ache throughout the day just by stretching every morning. Um, so that's that's fantastic. But yeah, that's the main four practices that I do. Those are really good. And do you, um, I, I guess for me, it's just interesting hearing you talk about it. And I feel like it's going to be helpful for people to hear, you know, how you as a full-time artist uh, fits self-care and just tending to your mental health into a busy schedule so i wonder if it's something that you talk about with like friends oh yeah family 100 because with the new project free spirit i had to literally at the listening party that i was on stage talking about it for like an hour straight like to people and like really trying to tell our people our people because i don't know what it is about black people and mental health and we feel like, you know, mental don't mean nothing when it means everything. So I, every chance I get, I'm speaking, I'm just talking about it. And like, uh, I know my dad was looking over it like, I'm good. My mental is whatever. I'm fine as long as my, as long as I can walk. And me, you know, going back and forth with him, like, no, dad, like your mental is just as important or maybe even more important than how you physically feel. And you know, every chance I get because it's really this taboo thing within our community. And I don't I don't even know why how they got like that. I'm sure it's like a very historic matter. Um, but yeah, so trying to make that change because it really needs to be a change. It needs a change for us to be able to heal as a people because we have a very traumatic history uh, for various reasons. And being able to speak how we feel, being able to cope with our anxiety, with our, you know, traumas is a very big thing that we all need to be able to do and express ourselves with. So every chance I get, we, we I'm in there talking about it. That's so good to hear. I'm so happy about that because I think, uh, I feel like to get 
mental health talked about more, it's talking about it in artist spaces is really important because as artists, we do feel a little bit more deeply. And I think that if artists are more warmed up to the idea of taking care of their mental health, since artists are low key at the top of the food chain, like the biggest celebrities are, you know, the musicians and the singers and stuff. When they start showing that they're taking care of their mental health, I feel like that's just going to trickle down and spread. Um, not everyone, but a lot more people than it's spreading to right now. These are facts, and I had to shout out Kid Cudi because I wasn't the biggest Kid Cudi fan. I didn't grow up with him. But I was recently watching his interview on The Barbershop, which is LeBron's TV show on HBO. And I went really, he was talking about his history and past and how he's been talking about mental health since 2007 before it was, you know, how it is now where we can openly say it. Back when it was like, you talk about it, you know, you getting your head cut off type vibes. And really for artists like him, who's, such on an A-list celebrity level to really speak up about it and to make music about it and to have a whole campaign about it. It's so incredible to see. And I do hope for, you know, all the other celebrities up there, they get they get down to business and really speak up on it because it's, it's, it's terrible. It, it's, it's really terrible seeing people our age like kill themselves and a whole bunch of other things because they didn't have the proper treatment or education because no one wants to speak about it in school or or at home so i agree yeah and i think it's also just like the language i think we right now we have a lot of doctors and therapists trying to tell uh people who don't trust doctors and therapists to take care of their mental health but yeah just simply having this conversation i feel like is gonna go a long way and i'm so glad to hear that you're kind of infusing these mental health conversations in the work that you're doing right now um and so if you can can you tell the audience you know some things that are coming up for you and what you're working on right now yes so free spirit is out now exclusively to Bandcamp because i'm boycotting spotify at apple music because they don't pay artists and that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole conversation in itself. But Bandcamp is like one of the last, you know, services where artists can get paid directly through your stream that you can actually donate directly. Same with uh platforms like Patreon. Um so yeah, Free Spirit is out now. I am also going on tour. So if you're listening and if you live in Baltimore, Maryland. I will be at Creative Alliance on January 22nd. And if you are in New York, I will be at the Boris and Horton uh, Cafe on January 25th. If you're in College Park, I'll be at the Only Vibe Studio January 28th. If you're in Philly, I'll be at the City Winery February 3rd. And if you're in DC, I'll be in DC at the Pie Shop February 13th. Definitely come out. The whole show is really about promoting mental health and, you know, doing things for yourself. And I'm going to have the best merch in the game. Uh, this merch looks so good. I can't wait to show the world. We've been working hard on that. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be a good time. Nothing but vibes, good people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's so great. I'm just so impressed. I'm really happy to hear that you're gonna start touring because i feel like you told me traveling yeah. is something i was um, important yeah i was looking at a map of america and i saw how small maryland was and i was like yeah i gotta get out because i saw with meeting people and performing live and people seeing that i was like I, I gotta figure it out and eventually i actually got a gig in london in september of next year so that's probably gonna be crazy wow that's so cool okay so obviously you've got so much, so much coming up and going on and so many good things in the works so can you tell my audience ways that they can stay up to date with you and all the work that you do 
Um, you can follow me on all social media at John Tyler Sounds. My website is johntylersounds.com. And if you join my email list, you get a whole bunch of discounts and insights to everything before it comes out. And you can join that on uh, on my website. If you'd like to contact me, uh, johntylersounds at gmail.com. Or if you want to DM me, that's cool. I, always, I talk to everybody. I'm a really people person. So let's have a conversation. Um, but I don't, thank you for everyone who is listening. I hope you enjoy it. And if you're going through the same things, let me know. We can talk about it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Students of Mind. I'm so excited for you all to finally meet John. He's been part of the show since the beginning and has been doing some amazing work for the young artist community in Baltimore over the past several years. So please check it out the description to see how you can follow and support John. His new project, Free Spirit, is out now on Bandcamp. Unfortunately, the tour dates he mentioned at the time of the recording have been postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but be sure to follow John and Love Groove to stay up to date on tour dates and other shows and festivals, and to hear some great music. As always, my social links are in the description of this episode, as well as the link to start your free Squadcast trial. If you have a moment, please leave a rating and review for the show. That helps these conversations get into even more ears and normalizes these types of conversations. Thank you again for listening to this season's last episode of Students of Mind. I hope you learned something new or resonated with something you heard today, and I will see you next season.